All right, so next we're gonna look briefly at algebra. And this is one of these places where this shift in perspective from parametric curves to vector valued functions really pays off because we know that we can do algebra with vectors, right? Um, so if I have, say, a pair of vector valued functions, and let's just draw, let's do two dimensional just to save some writing. So let's say I have f1 of t, g1 of t, and r2 equal to, say, f2 and g2. Uh, we can define, we can define the sum r1 plus r2, and, and it's exactly what you expect. You evaluate the two functions and then you add the corresponding vectors, right? So it's going to be f1 plus f2. Oops, not done with the vector yet. And then g1 plus g2, right? We just add the corresponding components. And if you have, say, some scalar c, some real number, some constant, we can define c times, let's say, r1 by just c times f1 of t and c times g1 of t, right? So we can do addition and scalar multiplication with vector valued functions in exactly the same way that we do addition and scalar multiplication with vectors, okay? Um, and now that's great because that's going to give us the ability to do things like comparisons, right? We can look at, you know, how close two vector valued functions are together because we can compute their difference, for example, right? We can subtract them, um, which might come in handy when you want to talk about things like derivatives, right? When you do integrals, you might want to be able to add. Uh, you want to be able to do algebra, right? Um, you want to be able to combine functions. And that's not something that you can do really with parametric curves, at least not as they were presented in the, in the previous chapter. Um, so this is another tool that we have at our disposal. Uh, we'll uh, see how it works in the next example.